some days my childhood feels so very far away. And others, I can almost see it. The magical land of my youth, like a beautiful dream of when the whole world felt like a promise and the lessons that lay ahead yet unseen. Looking back, I wish I'd listened. Wish I'd watched more closely and understood. But sometimes you can't see what you're learning until you come out the other side. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. This is Cheap Seat Reviews. Hello. Thank you for choosing once again to listen to Cheap Seat Reviews, the podcast that explores the Hollywood film industry for the greater good. And as I've been saying for seven years, the greater good. That's right. Seven years of podcasts. Happy anniversary to us are, all. Are we? Aren't we obsolete by now? Doesn't most of this technology change over by this point? Shouldn't we be, I don't know, talking heads or something in, in people's living rooms? Well, think of it this way. we Our show has outlasted two um, <laughs> uh, uh, administrations, uh, White House administrations, <laughs> um, uh, 11 iPhone iterations, and... Yeah. Um, Yet a some, partridge hitch in a pear tree. Yeah, I was gonna make a joke that uh, yet somehow the um, we still don't have a, a good DC movie. But anyway, that's for I, I no 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 no. Wonder no, Woman in, was a good. Yeah. Okay, all right, fine. I was gonna say right. during the lifetime of this podcast, we've only seen one good DC movie. I know Andrew <laughs> wants to argue, and that's fine. Um, but even he will, has kind of come back and said. Okay, Batman versus Superman wasn't as good as I originally thought. At least I think he said that recently. Maybe I'm lying. He's yeah. smiling wryly <laughs> at me through the camera. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, seven years. Congrats as uh, to to you two and to and to myself and to all of us for listening, or not for all of us for listening, but for all you guys for all listening. Of, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's awesome. We're so I appreciate sorry. it. It's been seven years of pain. I I do appreciate you. I, and the torture that you've gone through. I did go back a little bit today because uh, I posted a link to our very first episode, and so I listened to a little bit of that that first episode where you know before I had the phrase for the podcast that explores the Hollywood film industry for the greater good. It was the the podcast that watches movies that make you go, mm. <laughs> <laughs> "Why did I ever think that that was a good idea?" <laughs> I don't know because there's some that I would would have not made that sound at all. No, mm. <laughs> no. Mm. There's many, many, many. <laughs> I mean, even movies that we love, I wouldn't make that noise for. You know, I, mean, I wouldn't no, have made that noise no. for extraction. It or, might have been a thing seven years ago. You know, it's just it, things change over time. Well, I just so. I, we hadn't fully you know fleshed out the idea of what the show was going to be yet. We were still figuring yeah. things out. And frankly, when we recorded it, I wasn't even sure if it was going to be episode one because the first three <laughs> times we recorded, they were so bad that when it came out, actually not yeah. being all that bad, I thought, okay, this will be episode one. Because <laughs> um, even in my intro, I said, I think this will be episode one. So, Oh, dear. Yeah, I know. It's great. It's great. And then here we are yeah. seven years later, and we're still not great. But you know what? That's fine. We're having a good time. Uh, the people yeah. that listen seem to still enjoy us, and that's that's really all that matters. Is that? Well, I don't know. They don't respond. I did get an email. <laughs> uh, I did get an email this week, but um, unfortunately, that was when we thought that this movie we were going to do this week was going to be Moneyball. Yeah, um, there was a whole bunch of comments on your Facebook lot of post comments about baseball was, movies, which was great. Everybody loves baseball movies, right? Yeah, you know, we, were, we, we were getting a, a following of people that wanted a baseball movie for God's sake. I know, which is and typical cheap seat reviews. We dropped the ball. Yeah, I, I somehow missed <laughs> it. You did there? Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
I somehow missed that it got pulled. And so so this week, instead, we're doing Wonder Woman 1984. So here yeah. we are now, ready to do the intro as normal. This is episode 329. And tonight, we're talking about Wonder Woman 1984, or in the shortened WW84? version, WW84. So World War 84. We've had 83 other world wars. This is the 84th. Whew. And we're still here. Somehow. And I am Sean Allred, and joining me tonight is Andrew. You too can fly a jet with no training, Jemison. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's like riding a bike, right? Everybody I, does it. I realized that my intention with the way I phrased it halfway through my read is I was supposed to do it like the guy does it in the movie where life can be life is great, but it could be better, like that. That 80s yeah. schmoozy kind of thing. You, you do the voice, and you can do that. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm say, yeah. Like, on, I know, the, on the spot. Yeah, I know, on the spot. But like you have the ability to, to do that kind of voice, like where he says life well, is yeah, good, I but can, it could be better or whatever. I can life be the, be the schmoozy uh, announcer guy. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, yeah. And Sam. <laughs> no. W- oh. <laughs> <laughs> He just says no. <laughs> and Sam, why did she turn into a cheetah vector? Yeah, you know, Sean. Yeah. If there was anything in the world that you could wish for, okay. wouldn't you want to wish for your own death? <laughs> I mean, no. right now, right here, right, you know, don't you, is it that your deepest desire is to wish for you to, to run into the street in front of a train? There's no train in front of my street, right? but I know what you mean. Yeah, it- not in the street there. Yeah, there's usually not trains. <laughs> Unless this is Inception, there's usually aren't trains and streets. Oh, that's true. Well, that's true, yeah. Well, I mean, there's a train that goes downtown Hickory. So I'm I'm guessing that's what it is. Oh, so. okay. But, uh, Unless you're yeah. going but, I mean, rails, But it's not going to work, crazy. Sam, because... Why? Because, because we're not using particle technology, so therefore we're not touching <laughs> each other. Oh, that's right. Okay. We're using digital right. technology. Digital. So it's, it's, not, it's analog. It's all analog. We're <laughs> on nuclear. Yeah, or it's not analog anymore. It's digital. Right? Oh, yeah, so that's we the problem. Yeah, you're, you're, we're digital. We're ones and zeros. You can't touch each other with ones There's, and zeros. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, all right, go ahead and introduce yourself, and then, and then let's dive on into this. No, that's, that's, that's the intro. That is the intro. Yeah. We are doing Wonder Woman, yeah. World, War, World War II. No, World War 84. Um. Yeah, so let's do this real quick. I, we haven't done this in a while. Yeah. We've skipped it, but I'm going to do it because this is a brand new movie. There might be yes. a couple listeners that maybe haven't watched this on HBO. Uh, this is a spoiler episode. Um, yeah. I, it is streaming on HBO Max. Uh, the three of us have that, so we watched it, and that's why we decided to to do this. If you've not seen it and you don't want to be spoiled, this is an episode to skip, and we'll see you next week yeah. or just whenever you do watch it. But... I just want to read this one real quick. Diana must contend with a work colleague and businessman who desire for extreme wealth, whose desire for extreme wealth sends the world down a path of destruction after an ancient artifact that grants wishes goes missing. Okay. Mm. No, IMDb. First of all, (laughs) I I think there's some bad grammar there. Diana must contend with a work colleague and businessman whose desire. Are we... Is it the colleague and businessman? They have desire for extreme wealth because she doesn't care about wealth. No, that's that's bad writing. Sorry. Well, what do you? What else do you expect? Well, I, I don't know. I expect some, you know, a little bit of little yeah, bit. Better. I mean, yeah, IMDb nine times out of ten, their their descriptions are awful. Yeah, they're, they're you're, really you're not wrong. Yeah. Awful indeed. So. Uh, yeah, yeah night, this came out just uh, this last year. It was supposed to come out like a while ago, and it got pushed because of, I think, because of Star Wars, right? It didn't originally get pushed back because of the release of Star Wars last well, no. Christmas. Or That's some, a good question. I'm not 100% sure on that I can't remember. One. It got pushed, and then COVID, and then so it got pushed and pushed, and finally Warner Brothers is like, hey, we just need to get this thing into the eyes of people. We'll put it on HBO. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even if only... I do think it, it wasn't at the very first big, big, big blockbuster that um, that they just finally decided to stream. Um, well, I think uh, Mulan probably... Yeah. Well, I don't know that Mulan's quite that big, but it was it yeah. was one of the first to get well pushed. 
Maybe Tenet. Maybe Tenet was the first. No, one? Tenet because remember Tenet did a theater run. We, we, I know it seems okay. like a long time ago, but we actually have to go all the way back to Onward. Onward was the first. Okay. Onward was a Disney Pixar. It was supposed to be in theaters, Ooh. and then yeah. COVID hit, and Disney just said we're just going to go straight to, um, to I, stream. Yeah, I forgot all about that. Yeah. I, I for some reason I was thinking that happened before COVID. No, it came out like as COVID was hitting, and so Disney yeah. was like, yeah. "Here's a gift to you all," because it was in theaters for like five That's minutes. That's right. That's right. It was in theaters for a little bit, and then instead of typical. Eight to twelve week off time. It was like two weeks, and then it was on streaming. Um, which onward is really good, and yeah, if there oh, yeah. is a Oscar season, it should probably win best animated feature. I think. Maybe. What about Soul? But Soul was Soul is really good. It's really mm-hmm. sweet, and that's also one that went straight to streaming. Um, yeah. I liked I Onward think... better, but I also yeah. like that style of movie. Okay, yeah. You know, it's just that that speaks a little bit more to me. Soul is very sweet and it's very good. But if I want to if if I have an option with my kids to watch Onward or Soul, we're going to watch Onward. Personally. Interesting. Okay. So But I haven't I haven't seen Soul yet, so it's, I, I do it's not It's very know. good. Your kids are going to laugh at the funny stuff. Am I going to cry? Is this a Pixar crying movie? I mean, it it's not as bad, let's say you know the first five minutes of Up, it's not yeah. that bad, but it is still, it still uh, touches your heartstrings. Did you cry okay. at Inside Out? No. Okay, then you might not. It's kind of like Inside Out. It has the same kind of tone and feel that we're we're dealing with things bigger than just a couple of dudes on a road trip. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying okay. like it's, yeah, it's it's kind of dealing with the meaning of life, kind of kind of level of stuff you know interesting so i don't want to get you farther into it uh, at the risk of not spoiling but I'll let you explore it is deep though yeah it's deep yeah. your girls aren't going to get it they're just going to laugh at the funny stuff yeah um just a heads up they say hell in the movie it, it, it was weird what they use it really? in context of the as the place it's not a place, swear yeah. it's oh, just oh okay well that's fine yeah, and they do say H E double hockey sticks, though. Well, that's what he says. <laughs> right, am I in heaven? No. Am I in H E double hockey sticks? And then the, the little kids go spirits all say hell, hell, hell. <laughs> so it's, I looked over at Sarah. I'm like, oh my gosh, look at the, the balls on Disney. But yeah. if you're using it in the context, then I guess it's not a big deal. So anyway, um, but Wonder Woman 1984 is none of those movies, and it is here for us to watch. So. This movie, yes. we all have our five word reviews, and we'll do those as we do in good time. I just want to say that uh, this movie, I think, is going to. And Andrew has given us zero information <laughs> on what he feels. I know what where Sam feels because he and I were kind of texting back and forth as we were watching them, and. I gave a little teaser, I think, last week. Uh, did I do it during the show, or was that off mic? I can't remember now. I can't remember if we were recording I, or not. I don't remember either. I mentioned yeah. something to Andrew about it and, and whatever. But my point is is that, to me, this movie is what you would consider the typical sequel letdown. Okay. In, in, in my opinion, is that it's... It's nothing special than every other time we get a sequel to a great first movie and it just can't deliver. So that's that's all I'm going to start off with. Sam, I'll let you uh, take the wheel here with your five-word review. Sure. All right. If I can get my computer to work. All right. My... Um... my first... I've got two. And the first one is a logic puzzle that's dumb. Right. Um, and we'll get to some logic problems later on down the road. But but the one that 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 I put on here is almost there, but just misses. And I think this movie has some pretty good scenes in it and some good visuals. But I don't know if this is a DC thing or what, but it just seemed kind of dumb in places. The whole idea of it's, it's basically a a a. Um, a genie story, right? It's, 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 you know, having a wish, making a wish. And of course the wishes turn bad on you. 
And I just don't think they thought it through as to how that would work. Um, I had some problems with some of the rules that were changed throughout the movie in terms of how this guy was getting his power. Was he turning into some sort of superhero, but, but was relinquishing it? I, I don't uh, quite understand. I think the, uh, what's his name? Steve, is it Steve, Steve Trevor? Yeah. No. Steve Trevor. Yeah. Yeah. The pilot. Steve Trevor. Captain Kirk. I, they had to bring him back to make the stakes as high as they were. And I actually did feel a little bit when she had to walk away from him and you heard him in the background saying, you know, I'm already gone or something like that. And I was like, oh, that, that sucks. But then I'm like, well, good. This poor guy that he stole the soul from is going to be able to have his soul back and, and live, you know, live his life. So I was, I was okay. Um, you know, with, with, with that happening, it's just, it was so strange. And the idea of, how can I say this? The, the, the cheetah lady was so bad and, and was the, the, the CGI was so incredibly bad that, um, I, it, it couldn't come back from there once it got there in my mind. Andrew, you have the worst poker face I have ever seen. <laughs> I, I know people at home can't see what I'm looking at. He is sitting there with this grin on his face, like he knows a secret that Sam and I don't. Like, yeah, like he has this this secret that's gonna change the world of of the way we look at this movie and think of this movie. <laughs> and I cannot wait for him to talk because I know it's yep. just this. I mean, I just it's just driving me crazy. It's great. Um, well, and, and we all know Andrew loves his DC, right? Andrew's Andrew's a DC guy, and and I yeah. What what you got, Andrew? What's your thoughts? All right, my five word review. DC, how I've missed you. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, this is gonna be interesting. Okay, all right. So <laughs> I I don't have any like mind blowing comments to make about and and completely change your way of thinking but i will say that i I really enjoyed this movie (laughs) i liked it i liked it a lot um well i have to give you some some context so i i don't have hbo max oh okay so uh tuesday tuesday i call my wife at about three o'clock and i say hun Let's go see Wonder Woman in the theater. <laughs> nice. And I, I looked it up. The ticket prices were like six bucks at the big theater with the reclining chairs and everything. And I was like, oh, my God, they must be really desperate. <laughs> and so we were the only four people, not just in in that theater, but in the entire multiplex. Wow. And uh, there was one person selling popcorn. So I felt completely safe. Um and we we had the entire theater to ourselves for the whole movie, and it was just I, I can't tell you this is aside from the movie I can't tell you how much I have missed that experience. Yeah, you know I and it, I guess you don't really think about it because it's been nine months since or ten months since we've been quarantined. I don't know maybe it's been a year since I've been in a theater, and uh, or maybe not quite that long, but. I, I didn't realize how much I missed it until I was able to to do it. And I, it almost brought tears to my face you know, just to go and, and sit <laughs> down with a with some popcorn and a drink that I didn't need. And it was amazing. Okay. That may have had a little bit to do with <laughs> and you know my, what? my feelings of this movie. And, and and to be very fair, before you keep going with what I assume will be a very well-thought argument against me and Sam, and that is that we have said on, of the 320-something plus episodes, I would say at least 200, there have been times where we've said our moods affected the movie. Yes, yeah, where they do. We were in a they bad mood, or we were in a good mood, or where... I was grumpy, but the movie brought me out of it or something like that. So I applaud you, Andrew, for one, going to the theater. Yeah. And I am glad, truly glad that the movie made you happy. And that, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
part of me wants to say the this part of the not the cynic, but like I don't know, maybe it's the cynic, I don't know. But part of me thinks that you could have gone and watched um Star Crash at the theater and been <laughs> just as happy. Well, let's not go crazy. I know, your kids were there, but you know what I'm saying. No, but to get to the movie itself though, I I really my my wife and I had this conversation after it was over, thinking about how we have been inundated with Marvel, with the MCU. And I think a lot of people try and compare DC to Marvel. And you just can't. DC oh, yeah, is its own can't. thing. Yeah. And and you know, people will say, well, it's not this movie. It's not as good as Captain Marvel. It's not as good as she's not the same character as and that's okay. You know, the rules that apply in Marvel movies don't apply in DC. Not all of them, maybe some of them, as far as the superpowers and the, the you know. But I, listening to you talk about your the issues with the rules changing, I, you know, I noticed a few things, but it wasn't enough to bother me. Like, you know, my uh, my wife and I again we're on the way home and we we're just talking about it, and uh, I said, you know, what did he give up? Was it his son? Was it his health? Because you see his health deteriorating. Or was that just the the he his physical body can't handle this power, so it's just breaking down. And so that's really the only issue that I found in the movie was what is it that Pedro Pascal's character is, you know, in order to get your wish, you have to give up something. Mm-hmm. And that was a little ambiguous to me. I couldn't tell exactly what he gave up uh but i think we came after talking it through i think we came to the conclusion that it was his son and that he cared about the most um so i don't know so that that was a little weird but uh i just enjoyed it a lot kristen (laughs) wake i thought was gonna be i thought she was gonna ruin the movie because when i heard people say they didn't like it i thought well it's her fault I thought she was just fine. She added some comic relief to it that wasn't over the top. Um, and then when she became the villain, I I bought it. Like, you know, she's she's losing her mind and she is <laughs> taking control here. I liked everything about her until the cheetah, until the, the cat's character came out and flash the bunghole and you know <laughs> yeah it was really weird she God. started licking herself and singing at the same time it was very confusing yeah yeah and uh, it, it, and that's mainly just because it was cgi horrific you know it just was not i don't think it was done real well yeah well again that didn't take me out of the movie i i uh didn't have a problem with it but i, I just thought it was really well done i it was it as good as the first one no but I wasn't as disappointed as it sounds like you guys might have been about the you know, the sequel. Um, and then well, I got uh, well. I will say I got so pumped during the opening scene. That opening scene with the little girl racing, yeah, uh, and the music behind it. it I can only imagine how it felt in the theater. Right? It oh. just oh, you mentioned, holy crap. you mentioned the music in a text message, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. I had went into the movie expecting just this great soundtrack and I, it was uh, it just washed over me. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's so good. It's Hans Zimmer. I mean, and the yeah, crazy thing is yeah. like Hans Zimmer like 6 years ago said he was tired of he was done with superhero movies and then he still does like Justice League and then this movie and there was something else he did recently. I don't remember what it was, but like did he do Tenet? Uh, I'm, I'm sure he did him and Nolan are buddies, yeah. but like, yeah, which I watched today, by the way, it's so good. The The score yeah. is so good. So good. It, it, yeah. it, in, in parts of the movie, it, it really, for me, it really kind of held up the movie, like propped it up, not held it back, like made it better. Law gave it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, right. Like the scene in the mall, which I think is kind of dumb, but the scene with the music makes it better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I tell you, I'm gonna. I'll probably end up buying that track, the the opening track. Yeah, just because uh-huh. it's 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 up there with uh, uh, Duel of the Fates. 
I think, in terms of you listen it again. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's such a it'll it'll get your heart pumping. It's good stuff. It slaps. That's interesting. That, that's slaps. high there praise. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest with yeah. you, Sam. That's high praise to say Duel of the Fates. That's like the third yeah. most recognizable soundtrack in the world. Well, the, play it. You had a little clip of it, didn't you? Play play that little clip again. No, the, again, I'm not. I'm not saying that. Oh, what just happened? You guys still there? Yeah. Okay. You hung up on us. That was weird. <laughs> I moved my mouse and like it was like Skype disappeared for half a second. That was gnarly. Um, uh, sure. We'll get the last little bit here. What you're learning until you come out the other side. I mean, it, it's it's great. I don't get me wrong. It's, it's so great. good. I don't know yeah. if it's Duel of the Fates great, but it's really great. Um, yeah, so, I'll have to I, I'll have to hear it again without the dialogue, but yeah. I I think it's up there. I really do. Well, I mean, and I I love and some people and I remember saying you and I had conversations about this years ago about the 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 Hans Zimmer versions of Dark Knight and Man of Steel, and we saw mm-hmm. this really great masterclass. This dude broke it down as to why Hans Zimmer did the things that he did, and and like why you can't make a score sound like the 70s and 80s Superman and, and Batman. And and I love the Man of Steel soundtrack. I have yep. the, the scene where he's learning to fly. It, I have that in my collection. It's great. So, uh-huh. but I put it in that realm. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. I put okay. this among the Zimmer, like this, again, I need to listen to it out of context of the movie, but I would put it up there with Gladiator, with Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, I'm not quite to yeah. putting it in the John Williams category just yet, but I'm with you. It's, know, but I'll but I but I I'll go with Andrew and, and kind of like I said before as well. There there are certain set pieces in this movie that are spectacular. Right, you got the opening. I loved the desert car chase, not car chase, but yeah, the, the yeah. desert the, fight was really cool. I mean, and seeing her fight. You know, and the way she could do things with those cars and trucks is just flipping amazing. Literally but, yeah. flipping. <laughs> yeah, they are. Cars flipping, are flipping like crazy, yeah. Um, but, you know, it took me out of the movie when the plane flies to Egypt and flies back. Um, it, it took me out of the movie a little bit when she started flying because I, I didn't think she could, Right. But I guess she that is that a thing, I'm guessing, Andrew? Can I, she fly? I, that's one thing I said, Andrew, a text. Can she fly? Uh, you mean like without a plane? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Her in the comics, she can fly. I mean, she she flies just like Superman. Um okay. which is that. I, what I was gonna say about um uh, about this is I think what we're seeing it with these two movies is it's taken the development of the character a lot longer. You know, we see in and again, comparing it to Marvel, we could see all the superpowers that a character has in one film or in the first 30 minutes of a film. But, uh, you know, if you compare it to Captain Marvel, she realizes she has powers, but she doesn't realize they've been subdued. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, yeah, you see a little bit of change. But... It's Star Wars, right? Where they learn yeah. more and more about the Force. With each movie, you get something new with the Force. Right. And, you know, when Superman's learning to fly, you see him struggle and you see him learning to do it. And and my son actually brought up, because we took them with us, uh, and this was surprisingly, I was afraid it would be maybe a little inappropriate for kids, but it was. I thought it was fine. There was like yeah. one, one yeah. foul word that was a really bad one. Uh, but other than that, it wasn't <laughs> wasn't that bad. Um, so they my my youngest son is, is obsessed with Shazam. And so uh, he compared it to Shazam learning how to fly. And he said, well, he jumped off a car and fell on his face. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. So it, in this world, they're learning to use these powers a lot more than I think we see in in some of the other superhero movies, not just Marvel, but. And some others, I, but my 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 simple rebuttal, and I'm I'm with you on the idea of exploring new powers. I'm totally fine with that. I'm totally fine with that. The uh, the whip of truth or whatever it's called can do other things besides just make you tell the truth. Uh, I didn't know it turned you into Spider Man, but that's fine. I'm okay with that too. Uh, and I am reading here that during originally she couldn't fly, but during Silver Age comics of comics. 
she uh, discovered an ancient Amazonian technique that involves gliding on the air currents. And then on the crisis... Which is on, kind of what, how she explained it in this movie. Yeah. 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 And then in Crisis on Infinite Earths reboot, she can just full-on fly like Superman. But to your yeah. point about she's able to kind of like learn it, it didn't feel like she was learning. It just felt like she was just gliding in the air and then like the, the entire time, like there, it never felt like there was any danger to her. You know what I'm right. saying? Like it's, it's not like, well, she know. could already, she could already like Hulk jump, you know, these big leaps and yeah. I'm, yeah. Again, yeah. I'm, I'm with you on oh, Hulk yeah. jump, they but showed when that she, too. she lassoes yeah. the plane and then when she lets go of the plane, she's just floating. Like she's yeah. a peach in Mario too. I mean, she's just floating and it takes her a while. She has to remember what Steve Trevor said about you just get the current and whatever. And again, and I'm okay with that whole thing, but like, show me some peril. Show me where she's like falling and then remembers the line and then glide. You know what I'm saying? Like, it felt like she was never in danger of not being successful. Give me a little bit of Spider Man where he jumps off the thing and has to fall and lands where he says he needs more focus and then lands on a Ford Focus. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know that's a joke, but like, <laughs> um, Anyway, I, I will what say, is it, what is it about second movies, right? Sequels, superhero movies, where they they have to lose their power or they're losing their power? Yeah. Well, because that, that that is a trope that's getting a little tropey, if you know what I mean. Well, yeah, yeah. Spider Man Two does it. Um, Dark Knight doesn't. He doesn't really lose his powers. He just, um, I think Dark Knight is probably one of the few where he doesn't lose. Yep. His powers or anything. I guess he kind of loses at the end, generally, kind of, you know, or as yeah. a, in a whole. The other, um, what are some of the other ones? Um, well, in the original that. Superman, he gives up his powers to Mary Lois Lane, and yeah, yeah, becomes normal. Um, yeah, I, it is. Yeah, and uh, kind of a tr- uh, what's his name? Uh, Peter Parker has to lose some of his te- his the the suit. Um. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 So there's there's a little there, I, and I think the reason Sam is that it shows vulnerability. Yeah, because if she there has to be some sort of, yeah. Yeah, there has to be some kind cuz if she is always badass, which I guess spoiler alert because this movie, you know, is made in 84, is set in 84. We know she's going to get her powers back. Like we know that because we've seen yeah. Dawn of Justice where she's right. she's going toe to toe with What's his face? Um, the uh, God or not? Well, abomination. What's it, uh, what's it? What's it called? Abomination. Not. That's not what it is. What's it called, Andrew? I'm drawing a blank. All right. Well, whenever you Holy figure crap. out, Colossus. Uh, no. Um, no. We're, we keep thinking of Marvel yeah. things, but it's uh, it's whatever. They, it's like the anti Superman. Doomsday. No, it's not Doomsday. No, it's not yeah. Doomsday. Was it Doomsday? Yes. yes. Yeah, I think Lex oh, Luth- Luthor actually yeah. says it's your Doomsday or something. I can't remember. That's anyway, right. uh, yeah. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg says something and he shaped his head. It was weird. Anyway, um, let me let me tag on to something you said though. Okay, yeah, because it made me it made me think of something. So you mentioned her flying and lassoing things. This is I I was bothered when she lassoed the bolts of lightning. Really? Yeah, See, I, that was more good with. That I was than that I was, was the one uh... part I was super cool with. <laughs> I was like. I mean, I was thinking, <laughs> it, it, lightning is not a physical, like you can't grab a hold of light, you know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it's, it's it's not light; it's energy. But well, but the, 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 you the can't whip grab of truth to do it, right? But maybe, maybe. Here's here's my only defense to that. Remember who her dad is. Yeah, that is true. And well, her yeah. dad can physically hold a bolt. Okay. Yeah, you're right. That's that's and and it was because Sam mentioned that to me also in the ending scene, the the final scene, where um, her and Cat Lady are in the water and she electrocutes her, and that's how she kind of wins. It's like, how does that not affect Wonder Woman? Yeah, right. They're said, both in the same water in the water. And that's why I said, well, her dad Zeus, I, electricity probably has you know it, it probably almost that's true. recharges her batteries almost. I would bet. And I will take that as a good excuse. Yeah, I'm good I, with I, that. I, that's fine with me. Yeah, especially since she's lassoing lightning bolts and not having any kind of you yeah. know Benjamin Franklin you know <laughs> key on Honestly the the, Andrew the if line. you're going to have an issue with the lightning bolt it's the fact that that lightning stayed a long time <laughs> Well that is true too You know and that lightning was in the sky for many seconds <laughs> <laughs> it 
was the <laughs> slowest lightning ever. Or we're to believe that if it's if it's at the normal speed, then she is skipping off lightning at the speed of almost the light. Speed of light. Yeah. 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 She's broken the sound barrier with her lasso. But we are to believe, right, that that DC uh, DC um, heroes are are godlike, especially when you're dealing mm-hmm. with Superman and Wonder Woman. Yeah, right. Yeah. They're basically yeah. gods. Lower G god, yeah. Well, she's but, technically a demigod, but yeah. yeah, yeah. So that and and that is, I think, the key difference between Marvel and and DC. <laughs> Except Marvel does have a, a a lower G god also. So yeah, I just. In terms of one of the and, and my one of my biggest problems with with DC is just OP, right? What is their weakness? What is something that 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 will take them down? Obviously, Superman has his kryptonite. What is Wonder Woman's kryptonite? In this case, it's Steve Trevor. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I just I I think getting back to a generic idea is that. And I know, Andrew, you're 100% right. You can't compare this to Marvel. And this no. is the only way I'll compare it to Marvel is that, and I've said this a thousand times, is that Marvel makes a genre movie and then adds the super element into it. That's what made Wonder Woman so good. It was just a World War I movie, and then they yeah. added the super element. I don't know what right. this movie is. I don't know. And what that's this, okay for me. You know, it's like I don't yeah. know what it's trying well, they, to be they tr- or they tr- trying to tell me or... Yeah. Right. Um, okay. I do want to talk about some things that I liked because I don't want this to be an hour of me just and us and or me and Sam basically saying this thing sucks and Andrew saying no, it's not and this is why. The, some of the things I liked besides the music, and and I thought some of the visuals were really great. I thought Pedro Pascal got what plays Mandalorian as what he is being asked to do, and that is to play a 1980s corrupt. You know, televangelist, basically, uh, uh, yeah. gecko guy. What's his name? Yeah. Um, Martin. Uh, I have it written uh, down. Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Um, I yeah. Have, I have it written down. Somewhere. Yeah. Gordon anyway, Gecko. A, a Gordon Gecko. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Gordon Gecko. Like, he played it great. I thought mm-hmm, yeah. he was really good as an actor. I mean, he's overacting the hell out of it, but I think he's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but see, but see, he also his arc it made sense that way. He didn't start out overacting, right? He's kind of the lovable loser at the beginning, and and he, you know you're trying to pull for him, right? And then he he just goes bonkers by the end. Yeah, and I I took that to be that the crystal has done something to him, that mm-hmm. so like Kristen maybe went, maybe he was losing his mind, right? He just yeah. can't handle the power. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's what it was because like the physical, you said the blood and whatever. The the crystal is granting wishes is physically hurting him, which is why he has to, as he grants more wishes, he has to take the life and vitality of other people. That was one rule I was a little confused on. Is, yeah, what was he getting out of all this? Well, it's that. So the so the genie. So we're just gonna. He's basically a genie at this point. So he the grants a bottle. He grants the wish. The <laughs> genie in a gold suit. Um. He is able to grant a wish, but in a return for that wish, he can choose to take something from you or choose not to. He doesn't, it doesn't happen that every time. He just sometimes he does. And the magic is such that it's, it's so um, obscure and nuanced. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, I want your Rolex, therefore I take your watch. It's, I want your power and respect. Does that mean yeah. that just people are now just forced into this concept of, oh, this man is, I must re- treat him like the president. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the wish can change mm. people. Yeah. And I thought yeah. that and was the, really, really interesting and confusing at the same time. Well, we, this is another conversation in the car on the way home, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we talked about how the, when it was the actual stone rather than the, the human the stone didn't have an option it just chose whatever was the most important thing to you yeah right and so when it's him he has the ability to now say i'm gonna take this 
Yeah, which is why he would take the stone in the first place, or he would become the stone in the first place. And they didn't do a good job explaining that. And I think the uh, you know, like for instance, the uh, the driver of the car, you know, he asks him, "What was it?" He says, don't, don't you wish that traffic would just get out of the way? And he says, right, of course I wish right, that, yeah. but it ain't going to happen. We never see what happens to that guy. We never see what There's... he get, gets taken away from him, yeah. right? But we know that something is. Yeah, we, there's a lot of the people. I mean, the majority of the, of the wish, wish, wishers that wish, we don't wishers? see a negative. Because it, like, it almost feels like as he's continuing to grant wishes like because he has a need to grant wishes which i think is the stone part that's taking over his body is that i mean once he's become basically the second de facto president of the united states and then he continues to he needs more right he needs more power so he needs to continue to grant wishes but it just felt like the stone inside of him was forcing him to do these things yeah. Um, which is kind of why I was confused when he renounces his wish. Why doesn't the stone just poop out of him? Like, does it just, <laughs> is it just now, you know what I'm saying? Like, is it just gone? Or, or, or is it lying around somewhere now? Or is it because he is the embodiment of the power when he renounces the power's just, it's gone? Like, the spell's gone. broken. Yeah. I, I, because I mean, remember, this is, this is a spell that's been cast on this object by a god. Yeah, uh, but okay, yeah. but but the movie physically shows the stone getting particled into him. Is what yeah, I'm saying. that's true. So then, either particle it out, and then have Diana destroy the stone. You know, like he's standing there in the in the whirling ver- vortex on that island of misfit toys, and and then when he <laughs> renounces it, or whatever, so he can go get a save his son. You know, it 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 poops out on the floor, and then she hits it with a, her fisticuffs or whatever and destroys it. Like I don't know, it just it, it's one of those little little details of the movie that I just think would have those little things I personally would have helped me. Um, and again, I I liked Wonder Woman the one. It's still I still have a hard time with the concept that she kills a god. I'm I, you know what I'm saying like that's still from what I know about Greek mythology, killing a god is really hard. And she made well it. the the third act of Wonder Woman. Won't you know, we, we kind of gloss over it because the first two acts are so amazing. Yeah. That, that, that last act gets pretty bad. Um, and the other part about the wishes, it did seem kind of... Wishes! Kind of... So I did capture this. I'm going to play this one out of... Uh, <laughs> this clip out of order. But this, this kind of cracked me up and confused me at the same time. My cows! Uh, I told a man I wanted a farm. I didn't mean here. <laughs> so that's a funny line, but unfortunately I had to listen to it seven times as I was clipping it out. And I thought, he asked for a farm and he got two cows. He didn't get a farm, oh. he got two cows. That's you all know. I can see on film. You know what I'm saying? Like if, yeah, if I would have saw more than two cows in that in that area though. I, I mean, thought there was three? You know, they didn't they didn't pan out to you know. But my point is he know. didn't he didn't get a farm, he got a couple of animals. Like but if that, it would have been farm? funnier, it would have you know a milk farm. Yeah, it would have been funnier. I think if it pans out and in the middle of the complex there are co- there's crops. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like we see okay. crops and chicken. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, the only reason why I went to that because under the goose section, I wanted to, I was looking for something in particular, which I did find. But under the goose, in that shot where it's showing kind of destruction, there's two things that caught my eye. The goof was, and I couldn't find it. It says that there is a Trump Pence sign in the background. Now, there is a sign that has a blue field with one word in white and a smaller word, and I'm watching it on my big TV, and I couldn't tell what it says. So if that's maybe someone that worked on the set and knew that that's what that sign was, you can't tell that it's a Trump Pence sign. But the other thing that caught my eye, and again, because I was looking for that sign is in that scene where it shows the guy. The woman runs up, she's walking her dog, and she's like, the, the, the Iranian embassy is under siege, and there are Porsches racing up and down the street. You know, and this one, he's like, but I have my cows I have to take care of. And in, there's people running and putting suitcases into cars. Like, it's mass hysteria, right? We are, we are the days before dystopian future. And in yeah. that field where the cows are, there's a bench with a couple 
just having lunch. <laughs> like they're just it's, they're on a date. It's so weird. And, well, know, and maybe that's their maybe that was their dream. Maybe though. that was their wish. Yeah, to, their wish. Yeah, to get together. But it's, that's how I because that, I, I noticed that. But I just thought, well, that's what they wanted was to have a yeah. dream date. Yeah, I their I final didn't notice moments it together. Were yeah. Yeah, I didn't notice it in the first viewing. I noticed it in the second, cause, or the fourth and fifth and sixth time I was, because I was looking for that dumb sign. Because I was going to screen <laughs> capture it and go, hey, look, even Trump is ruining a movie in 1984, or something like that. But um, some of the other little things I had, and again, they're not really super nitpicks. Um, like, why is there wind in, in, indoors? I thought that was weird. Um, what, when they made witches? That was part of the whole... I, you know what? You're right. Now I, you're right. You're right. I get that now. Cause when there's a wish, then there's a little bit of a gust. And yeah, when, that's how you know the wish went through. And at the end of the movie, he's worked. getting millions of wishes at a time. That's why there's swirling. Okay. Yeah. Explained. I'm with you. Yeah. Uh, I did write, I guess the wall that that guy wished for wasn't surrounding his palace. Otherwise, Mando wouldn't be able to leave. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was right? interesting. Yep. Um, but again, that goes back to the wish, right? When he wishes the thing and then the guy laughs at him. So that's a trope, right? Where the bad guy can't stand people laughing at him. And so he says, okay, then I'm going to take your security staff and leave you here with nothing. So now that wish has forced the minds of these non-talking extras to just go, okay, he's the boss now. We're with him. I just... That, that's a powerful yeah. wish, you know? I mean, even Gene well, says, I can't Couldn't make he have people... done that with Wonder Woman as well, though? Somehow, some way... You but know, her wish her wish was no, made before. But but it wasn't the wish of the, the bodyguards. Well, yeah, yeah. He could just go up to some bodyguard and put his hand on him because don't you wish Wonder Woman was dead? Then she would die. Right? Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Or don't you wish Wonder Woman did everything I said? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it could have been it could have been made into a really formidable weapon because it's not like the rules that the genie has in the Aladdin are there. You know, the fall in love with yeah. you can't kill any while you're bringing one back from the dead. Yeah, I mean, it's a good thing he didn't have a dead wife or something like that. Uh-huh. You know, like that would be yeah. really weird. But you're right. Yeah, that that I mean, at any point, if he knew Wonder Woman was after him, doggone it, that's what I would have done. Right? Don't you wish Wonder Woman was dead? Yeah, or yeah. don't you wish Wonder Woman worked for me? Yeah, yeah, I'm with Holy you. Crap. Uh, laughter is oh, I mentioned that inspirational speech to save the day trope, uh, money troubles <laughs> motivates bad guy trope, and jets are easy to fly. Of course, well, you just press a button. They're they're they have autopilot. Okay, <laughs> I am. Autopilot to uh, to uh, Egypt and back. I'm yeah. I'm I'm okay with the trope of I need someone to talk me how to land a plane. But he was a World War One pilot. He was flying planes made of cardboard <laughs> and paper mache, and now he's flying a 1984 jet. Which, by the way, I didn't know there was an airport behind the Smithsonian. Um, well, you saw that in Transformers. I the, know, the and that, that bothered me. There's a me. desert before, behind them. <laughs> I know. They walk out of the Mithsonian, and they're in they're outside of Phoenix, where the airplane graveyard is. It's no <laughs> sense. <laughs> and, and see, yeah. and that goes back to my thing. And Andrew, I'm not trying to piss on your movie um, in this particular part, in that this is where movie directors treat us like idiots. And I don't like uh-huh. that, because we've talked about yeah. that before. They're making us assume that we don't know that there isn't an airport where fully fueled, ready to go jets are just hanging out. Well, did we ever see them? Did we see them though walk out of the Air and Space Museum to this airport, or did it was it just a cut scene and where? You know what? There was a cut scene and yeah. they were in a cab. Yeah, I don't You're think right. that. You're right. I don't it's think not... they're saying that. Maybe okay. But they still took a cab to a base where there was a fully fueled jet, and they just walked on. Yeah, right, yeah. She had access. She had access to the. But jet. that was the thing, right? She had access. You're right. She swiped a card, right? Yeah. She swiped a yep. card well, to get in. So there is another part of the Air and Space Museum in Washington. Yeah. Th- that they house these the hangers. Large, yeah, the hangers. Yeah. The hangers. Yeah. And I think that's what that was supposed to be. Yep, I agree. 
So, yeah. so not because at the she mall. would have access because she works. Yeah, at not at the mall. Somewhere else where they have access to the jets. Okay, it's not at the mall. No. I'm I'm fine that like the in downtown DC. I'm I'm fine with that. But it's a fully fueled jet that goes 35 <laughs> that, miles an hour. <laughs> that did. Uh, that was another thing that did kind of catch me. I, I was sitting there thinking, did they just keep these fueled up? I mean, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> and armed. That thing had missiles on it. I mean, it yeah, was armed. Yeah, yeah. And and it was a beautiful scene where they're flying through the fireworks. But Steve Trevor is acting like he's never seen fireworks before. Fourth of July has been celebrated in this country for a long time. Before he died in 1917, they, yeah. he, he's, he would have seen fireworks. But not you're right. Close, though. Not like flying through them, which is, again, it was a pretty scene. It was very lovely. It was a cool date for them to have. But, air, but that, unless he's flying a Harrier, it wouldn't be going <laughs> that slow. Yeah. And it annoyed me because I know that stuff. But most people yeah. might not know that stuff. I don't know. Yeah. Um, one, one more thing, just real quick. Uh, and again, this I know it, we're comparing again to D, uh, to Marvel, but there's one thing, one other thing that it didn't necessarily bother me, but I think they could have taken advantage of. And I think that Marvel does such a great job of world building, and we see characters introduced in pretty much every Marvel movie. There's there's another character that you see later on, you know. There's another hero. Even in world, uh, even in Iron Man, we see uh, Rhodey. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, we see War Machine. We don't know that that's him in the first movie, unless yeah. you know the comics. But we, we see also that. see uh, uh, Scarlet, not Scarlet Witch, um, Black Widow. Yeah, and so Iron Man too. Yeah. I feel like they could have taken the opportunity to say, maybe not. Okay, this is the Green Lantern Corps somewhere. You know. Because it's an alien group that's around, mm -hmm. or uh, Martian Manhunter, or another DC character that you don't have to do a lot with them. Just, or maybe you introduce a character. Martian Manhunter can shapeshift. Maybe you introduce a character that later we realize is Martian Manhunter in a different movie. Yeah. You know, I, I just feel like they miss some opportunities to world build. It, in in the DC movies, it you it, it feels like a standalone movie. I mean, show me Wayne Enterprises being looted. Yeah, or I'm saying something yeah. like that. It just yeah, you're, tie you're, it in with something. Give us some Easter eggs tying it into some of these. Other yeah, stuff. yeah. Show a, a news clip of uh, a, a strange uh, meteor crashed in the field in Kansas or something. Isn't that where Superman crashed? Kansas or somewhere like that? I can't remember. I thought it was in the fifties. Well, in this in this timeline, he, he crashed, and I mean, he was yeah. he was sometime in the eighties. So anyway, um, only last few things is uh, let's see. Yeah, so the last thing I, I I joked earlier about was the whole particles thing, and that's yeah. To me, I, I'm okay with him finding a way to connect to people all over the world. Because it gives it gives weight to the stakes of the wishes that the world's literally about to rip itself apart. Because we learn earlier that any any place that this citrine thing has been found, the whole civilization basically perished because they all started wishing, and then wishes and wishes and wishes, and then it eventually they you know killed themselves, right? Yeah. And so the idea is that this thing is eventually going to destroy the world, and but the whole and I captured the the captured the audio clip talking about particles and how it touches people, and then, but that's not how it actually works. But it's a it's a wordplay, and it that annoyed me. But then I remembered. But they did the wordplay earlier in in Woman Woman in Wonder Woman one, when they did. You can't go out there. That's no man's land. No man can survive. And she turns with a smile and says, I am no man. I am and no then, man. And yeah. then goes out there and does her thing, just like they did in Lord of the Rings, where the the witch king says, You can't kill no man can kill me. And she takes her helmet out and says, I am no man. Which is one of the cringy moments. Of, oh yeah, it's probably the weakest moment of the a, whole trilogy. Yeah. And when Gollum says Hobbits is and then Frodo says, Hobbits is what? Hobbits is who? 
<laughs> yes, that was it too. Okay, sorry. Um, anyway, I just I know they needed to find a way to do it, but it just it seemed really it was just it was just bad wordplay in, in my opinion. But that's all the notes that I have on the movie. I didn't take many because when I watched it, I didn't know I was going to review it for the show. Uh, I was just watching yeah. it for the fun of it um, because. I wanted to watch it, and and I was super excited to watch it. And like Sam said, the intro. Oh, here's another thing though. So we had people comment though. I am actually kind of. Um, this was cool. I commented, "Hey guys, you know we're gonna we're doing Wonder Woman instead of um, Moneyball," and we got actually a pretty good amount of uh, of comments about about the the this doing Wonder Woman. You know, we got a comment like. Um, I they that they, they liked the movie and uh, they liked the fact that the 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 villain was a female. Yeah, and I'm looking for some of the other other comments we had. People actually wrote on our Facebook page. I want to give them some credit here. Uh, let's see. These are, but not these are only just was the people that are listening to the show for the. I pay them basically. Uh, oh well, you know, like. Um, <laughs> well, not only is it a, f- a female villain, but you understand why she does what she does. Yeah, just justified. Right? It's a yeah, yeah. Um, the you know, so a good friend of mine, his name's Michael Avery. He doesn't listen to the show. He helped us out years ago when we did our live episode. And uh, I always have to try to like, when, whenever Avery texts me, there's like a little bit of a translation error because he's a bad texter. So he says, the whole story is bad, and when could Wonder Woman fly her own? Why did C need Invisible Jet? <laughs> That's the way he types. Um, Why not have an Invisible Jet? Uh, and then my uh, cousin sends back saying, well, you know, it was her time spent with Captain Kirk that taught her how to fly, which we mentioned. I thought that was one of the better parts. Better parts. She can fly a lot of the comics... Uh, and if you're going to say the movie was bad, at least mention how campy the moral lesson speech was. Reminded me of another Martha moment. You know, she's basically changing the mind of everyone on the planet with uh, a trophy heroic speech kind of a thing. <laughs> and uh, and then, of course, then we got... But she's using the lasso of truth to do it. It's not just her. Yeah, well, I just assume that she's <laughs> using the lasso of truth as like a... HDMI cable into the camera. She's just well, and that's kind of how it is. But you got to remember that that lasso has has persu- persuasion powers. Oh, so she's using the lasso to oh, it, to it him. Does. See, I did not know that. I didn't. I knew that, but I didn't think about the fact that I thought it was. I thought it was just like a like a truth serum. Like he has to tell the truth, or someone has to tell the truth while lassoed. Well, it is in a sense, yeah. But it's also, I guess if you to see the truth. So if you lasso, because she, yeah, because she talks about the truth and seeing the truth, yeah, and and she talks about that with her lasso earlier in the film. So the oh. idea being that she uses the truth thingy, it's like a reverse thing. So she's actually sending the truth vibes through him as the antenna back out to the world, and they're getting yeah. the big uh, glowy gold through the televisions, and getting the the vibe back to them. So it's not that she's just changing their minds by a speech. She's actually she's, showing them. She's the truth. using wish powers to change their minds physically. So so yeah. she's so she's also a uh, uh, um, uh, she's Professor X. She she used her 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 force powers to change. Um, there you go. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That's interesting. I never thought about that. Um, let's see uh, other quotes. Uh, other friends here that posted saying that uh, Kira she liked it. Uh, her only issue was the fact that in Wonder Woman 1, her mom is pissed that they're training her, but in this movie, she's excited <laughs> and proud. So there's a little bit of continuity error there. And let's see. My buddy, uh, he but he hates all movies that were made after 1989, uh, <laughs> said that he thought it was uh, boring and stupid. He said that his friend, his a movie hero movie aficionado, said it sucked and it did. So, but then again, he doesn't really like anything after. If it was in color, he doesn't really like it. 
So that's so that's fine. Good. He's a good friend of mine, and he's a filmmaker, uh, but he's just a grump. He's like he's like the Grinch of film, if that makes sense. So, by by your explanation, though, he has to hate his own stuff. He typically does. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't his usually. Is... He doesn't usually make movies. He mostly he does. Well, he did make a movie together. He's he's the guy I know. I've told the story where he yelled at me on set. Like doing like what um, Christian Bale did on the set of uh, Terminator Salvation, where he yelled at the at the director of photography. He yelled at me for setting the lights up wrong, even though I did it right. But he did it in front of the crew, and he did it in a way to try to embarrass me. And he did, and it was pretty funny. Um, another friend of the show, Andrew, he put um, he put this movie fourth in the nine movie DCEU. Putting it at Wonder yeah. Woman, Aquaman, Justice League, this movie, Suicide Squad, Man of Steel, Shazam, Birds of Prey, Batman v Superman. So, interesting. I don't agree with his lineup, but okay. I don't agree with anything he says, especially when it comes to movies. So I'm with you. This is the guy that says that you're supposed to watch Star Wars one through nine. So he's he's, he's obviously wrong okay. in many many things. And that's it. I'm going to play some clips now so we can get out of here because the show's already running a little long and I apologize. It's mostly my fault. So here we go. You, okay. Last thing, but this is about the clip. I get the motivation of Kristen Wiig's character. Her character is shit on until she makes her wish. And I, I get that. She wants to be noticed and to be seen it's a little annoying that it's kind of like the she's all that phenomenon where you just take her glasses off and now she's hot um, mm -hmm. a little bit. But anyway, um, this is not Kristen Wiig's fault. She just, um, unfortunately, she's just surrounded by terrible people. Uh, Diana, do you happen to know who a Barbara Minerva is? Oh, hi, Carol. Hi. I'm Smee. I'm Barbara. Remember you, you hired me? Started last week. Oh, yeah, you're a terrible person if you don't remember the woman you just hired. Yeah. Um, How do you have a job at the Smithsonian? I I have to say that uh, speaking from personal experience, I am on an interview committee for the school. So when I when we hire new teachers, I I'm on that uh, committee. Or uh, I won't say who, but someone who is let's say in charge of the school and makes final decisions on hiring, forgot that he had interviewed somebody. Yes, but <laughs> I, I, you've told this story, and it's a hilarious story, and it, and it speaks volumes to that person, but he didn't hire that person and then forget their name a week later. Well, and how many people work at the Smithsonian, though? Probably hundreds, if not thousands. I, I, I yeah. get your point. But... but but if her job specifically is to hire people for the, geog the geology, the rock department, you know what I'm saying? Like, how many people work for her? We don't know. It's, it's not like she probably has quite a few. Okay, maybe she has a few. 10, 20, 30, I don't know. But she doesn't have, she's not in charge of the Smithsonian, okay? She's in charge of her department. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's not head of, if she was the head of the Smithsonian, she's not just going to hire a lady who just does rocks. She's, she, I'm saying that's way above her pay grade. I was not hired by the president of Central Piedmont Community College. I was hired by the guy that runs my department. It's just, she sucks is my point. Like, I feel bad. I, I get her character. I understand. You're not wrong. Why. I just wanted to. No, no yeah, that's fine. Your hard time. No, no, it's fine. And you should. Uh, as, as your jobs as, as my co-host. But like, <laughs> I get her her wanting to make a wish that she, the, the wish that she makes, and obviously the thing that she gives up is her humanity. That's what she loses is her sense of yeah. humanity and self, and I get that, and and that's very very obvious in the movie. Um, but anyway, uh, this was a funny line. Oh wait, no, uh, no, this is uh, this is the um, uh, the Mandalorian. Life is good, but it can be better. He's, I think he's really good at that. I thought he was really good. And his, his storyline with his son was sad. It made me really sad. Mm -hmm. um, and frankly, it was really sweet at the end when he gave everything up for his boy. I thought that was yeah. very sweet. This, this movie has a lot of moments that are great. Just like we had issues, Sam, this is the same thing we had issues with with Batman v Superman, is that 
there are moments that are great, but there's never, like Andrew mentioned, there's not a lot of world building. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's too, it's too herky jerky. So anyway. Um, oh, and by the way, I was listening to another podcast and this podcast was recorded three or three years ago, or whatever. And they mentioned, Sam, your issues in the last season of Game of Thrones, where or the last seasons oh, yeah. of Game of Thrones, where it was like in the first season, it took them a whole season to get from um, yeah. the north to the south. And in the last season, it's like a person can go, travel 2,000 miles in an, an hour. Yep. And run the entire way. Yeah, yeah. you know, like, you know, the, the whole Cairo from, from D.C. to Cairo and back. Which, Andrew, you need to answer this question, D.C. guy. <laughs> we know that Gotham represents New York. We know that. Mm-hmm. And so does Metropolis, which is confusing. And they're next to each other for some reason. Well, like, that only in this universe. In the comics, they weren't that close. Okay, because they're like across the street from each other. You know, they're like angry right. neighbors. But but the rest of the world is normal, right? There's still a Washington D.C. Like, are there other cities? Like, I know it. Yeah, like, like yeah, in Titan, there's other... like in the Teen Titans, they're not in L.A. They're just in. They're on the West Coast in the city. Yeah, they... I mean, there's a San Francisco Tokyo, and well, that's San Francisco. <laughs> that's that's uh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Baymax, your personal healthcare companion. <laughs> uh... No, but there are other places in D.C. Uh, pretty much where wherever there's a superhero, there's a made up town yeah. or city, um, and you can actually Google um, like DC cities, yeah, and it comes up. And some some heroes are from uh, legitimate cities that exist, or are housed there or stationed there, or whatever. Uh, and then others are in, you know, uh, metro city or. And uh, yeah. what's an, what's another one? I'm trying to think of the what's arrow. The Arrowverse, yeah. yeah. The arrow. Oh, the arrow. Star. Is Star, Star City. Star City. Yeah. Star oh, City. I thought Star City was where the Flash is from. Isn't that oh. where the Flash is from? Star City, and he's from. You're right. They're all they're all kind of dumb names like that, though. Is my problem. Yeah. Is yeah. That, um. And they all look like New York, which is funny. Like they they all look like New York. I mean, I mean, Arrow, Starling City, Starling. No, I don't know. Well, it was anyway. Starling in the, in the movie or in the show because it sounded bad as just Star City, oh, but in the yeah. comics, it's just Star City. Okay. okay. I mean, that sounds like something from Pokemon. Ash yeah. went to Star City <laughs> and found three Pokemon. You know, it just. Um, <laughs> I know it's a choice. I know it's. I, I just it's it's weird to me. I just, it's weird that, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's weird because there's real and fake. You know, like, even Teen Titans who who fight crime in West City then go to Tokyo. So, like, I wonder, like, is it just, is that just localized to the United States? You know, like, is the DC extended universe in a parallel alternate universe to our own in which cities are named a different thing, like San Francisco, you know, like an alternate timeline kind of a thing. Anyway, I'm mm. not going to explain that right now. What I am going to play is a line about futons. And then I, uh, I woke up here. Where? I ended up in a bed. Uh, strange, strange pillow bed with slats. A futon, yeah. A voodoo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not comfortable and really a bit, uh, a bit backwards, if, if I'm being <laughs> really honest. I mean, for a futuristic time like this, 1984, 1984. Yeah, it was a sweet scene. It was that was fine. Just, I like Captain Kirk. He's great. Uh, he's obviously, he's obviously the biggest Star Trek connection. But there's another one which is kind of cool, and that when they're exploring the Smithsonian and he looks at the astronaut and kind of has a smile. And then they, they kind of turn the corner and he sees like all these space vehicles just off camera is the model of the uh, Enterprise. You know, they, they obviously can't put it in the shot, but there is the, the original production model of the original TV show Enterprise is in the Smithsonian, um, which is kind of neat. So like if the camera would have gone over like a couple degrees or whatever, you would, you would have seen it. And he would have been like, hey, that looks familiar. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, here's some more Chris Pine. You have a plane that can fly from here to Cairo in one shot. That's amazing. It's so amazing. It's not real. 
Okay, sorry. Uh, and I mentioned this earlier, Andrew, the, the thing about the security team. Then I will take your security team and leave you here with nothing to defend yourself against the wrath you most certainly will face. He snapped his fingers. I like to snap his fingers. And it's like that snap, and all the guys are like, oh, he's our boss now. Okay. Uh, cows. I already played this. I won't play it again. My cows. I just like that one. I'm just going to keep that. <laughs> My cows. Do I have the other cows? Please tell me I have more cows, right? I have to have more cows. Uh, let's see. And not just because you're prettier than most cows. Oh. Most. You never saw Jessica. <laughs> I didn't know I had that. Let's see. What is this one? Abby's smarter than you think he is. Cows are smarter than I think he is. Oh, there we go. <laughs> didn't know I had so many things about cows. That's interesting. I was looking for have... my twister. The twister. Well, oh, that's that's what I was going to ask. But we did Twister live. That's we right. did Twister live. That's why we don't have. Oh, honey, we got to go. We got cows. Okay, we here's got cows. A, here's a particles and how they're explained. What's this? Okay, and also, <laughs> my only other small complaint is the fact that they have top secret data just hanging out in the oval, and he's able to like I know he's powerful enough that he can just walk in, but no one thinks we shouldn't have this up right now. Let's at least hang a sheet over it or something. But anyway, it's fine. Not a problem. What's this? Global broadcast satellite. Top secret program that enables us to override any broadcast system in the world in case we need direct contact with the people of an enemy state. So what does that mean? You're taking over everyone's TVs? How? Oh. Uses particle beam technology just like the Star Wars program. Apparently it bays the landscape in a signal of particles that goes in and fiddles with any technology it touches. New or old, broadcast whatever you want. Very impressive. You said... touches? As in the particles you are sending... are... touching everything. It's a figure of speech, but yes. I mean, even the movie says it's a figure of speech. Um, and... And if you're listening and you're young enough that you don't know what he means by this, it's like the Star Wars program. That's not just put into the, the movie to make you think of Star Wars. Ronald Reagan actually spent a billion dollars developing a missile defense system called the Star Wars program, mm -hmm. and it was a it was a missile defense system based in Antarctica or the or Arctic. It was near the Caps because that's where the missiles yeah. were going to come from. It's over the Caps, and it was. It was a way to knock missiles out of the sky like a laser defense system in Star Wars. So Google it. It's pretty great if you didn't know what that was. I, um, there you go. And now for some more bad news. Ready? I will play you, not read, I'm going to read you some trivia. Trivia, uh, the little girl that played young Diana did all of her stunts herself because she was better than her stunt doubles. <laughs> Good for her. Um, I awesome. thought this was interesting, not for the second number, but by the first number. So Gal Gadot was paid $10 million for this film. That's not surprising. Wait, is it Gadot or Godot? It's Gadot. You're waiting for Godot. Was... She's, she's not French. Are you sure? Are you sure? And I'm, I'm being serious here. I, I swear it's Godot. I've heard her introduced on like talk shows, and they've always said Godot. Really? I've always heard, I've heard Gadot. Like other people have said that. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm confused. Yeah. I um, think it's Gal Gadot. Her yeah, name is. is pronounced Gal Gadot. G O D Gal G U H dash D O T E. Gadot? Do. D O T E. You pronounce the T. Gadot or Gadot. Yeah, maybe they say Gadot with a T and it just sounds like. Uh, I mean, it's a soft T. Yeah. Pronounce. But like the book Get that out. the homeless man is wait, is reading when Kristen Wiig walks up, he's literally reading Waiting for Godot. Yeah. No. Huh. So that's uh can I just call her Gal then? Are we okay with Gal? Mm -hmm. Gal, yeah, sure. Gal Godot. Gal Godot. Wait, 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 she says her own name. Hold on. Oh, she does say Gal Godot. The Godot. So, so we're kind of a, a combination of both. Okay. Yeah. Of what, Sam? Okay. 
Gal Gadot, a combination of both. <laughs> of both? Okay. That's, of both. Ooh, that was loud. Sorry, I didn't mean to blow out your speakers if you're listening at home. So Gal, G- Gal uh, was both paid. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Gal Gadot <laughs> was paid $10 million for this film. That's not all that surprising. It's a lot of money, but that's what you expect. I was surprised mm-hmm. the fact that she was only paid, and I mean only, I know Hollywood numbers is different, but only 300000 for the first Wonder Woman movie. Well, she wasn't a huge name. I mean, she was in Fast and the Furious, and uh, she is a woman. And unfortunately, we There's still see... Wrong with no, th- I'm, I'm saying, unfortunately, we, we still see unequal pay for the same job in this country. You are, you are correct. And women, especially in Hollywood, are paid less. Um, and you, you're right. I, well, she was in Dawn of Justice for a few minutes. Uh, she was in Triple Nine, which we watched. Furious Seven, Fast Five, Night and Day, which I watched, but I don't remember her in that at all. Uh, Fast and Furious. Yeah. So you're not wrong. She's not a star yet. I mean, Wonder Woman, well, Donna Justice is kind of what made her a star. But that's what I'm surprised with. I mean, keeping up with the Joneses she's in also, that's why I was just surprised she didn't get paid. That's, that's, I mean, it's a lot of money, but it's not, you know? Anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's certainly not, you know, Robert Downey. I, I think it more. gave her a break, though. And it, that's what she was more concerned about than the money. Yeah. I mean, and maybe she took, maybe she did back end. Maybe she did like what um, Robert Denny Jr. did and said, oh, pay me 300K, but I want, yeah. you know, a percent of the the money, you know, banking that it would be a success, which it financially was. Are you sure she does back end? Because I feel I, like I was going to leave that alone. But extra. You know, I was going to leave that I alone. I didn't touch that one. But, uh, but there you go. Well, I'm preferred and I went there. So that's fine. <laughs> somebody had to. Oh, I guess somebody had to. Uh, let me get out of here. Patty Jenkins picked the eighties, the director of the film, Patty Jenkins is, uh, as the eighties as the setting, because she saw it as the height of Western civilization and society. And so it offers the opportunity to explore how Wonder Woman would deal with types of villains that come from that era. Uh, Patty Jenkins and Pedro Pascal based Maxwell Lord's portrayal on Gordon Gecko, Lex Luthor and Lex Luthor of Superman. Pascal also based his performance on Nicolas Cage, which I think is great. <laughs> and I can actually kind of see that. I could kind of see, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like if this mm-hmm. movie was made 15 years ago, I could totally see Nicolas Cage in that role. Mm-hmm. Don't you see it? Like, I need more wishes. I can't do a Nicolas Cage. He would have, he would have miss, messed the movie up completely. But, but yeah, up, but I could have seen been, him in it. It would have been, you know, 15 years ago, we would have been before, well, we would have been right at the dark night time, but that was still kind of in the, Movies are bad. Comic book movies are bad era. You know, we're still mm-hmm. in the Fantastic Four. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, other than Dark Knight and Dark and, and Batman Begins, anything before Iron Man is terrible. You know what I'm saying? It, it is. So, and that's, yeah. it's fine. Uh, time to play this. All right, we're going to get it. Excuse me while I whip this out. We're going to knock these out. We decided to do... Superhero women, women that are superheroes, the ones that we like, and we will start with Andrew. Okay, I have uh, Katniss Everdeen at number three. Okay. Uh, at number two, I have Jen Erso from Rogue One. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. And number one, I have Lilu from The Fifth Element. There you go. So you went two Multiple regular times. heroes and one slightly superhero. Yeah. I'm with you. Ah, oh, Lilo's a great one. Multipass. See, now I'm sad that I didn't pick her. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Sam. All right, I've got uh, Shuri from Black Panther. Okay. Um, I've got Black Widow from all of them. Yeah. And then um, I've always been partial to Storm in the X-Men movies. Yeah. I've always liked her powers and what she can do. That's interesting that of the superheroes, you only picked one with powers. Right? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, see, now Andrew's got me questioning my entire list. Because <laughs> as, as typical, Andrew's list is always better. I should really go first and let Andrew go last, because I always feel so bad yeah. by my list. Because it's making me think like... 
Because I went, I went true superhero. I went Scarlet Witch, uh, Gamora, and Elastigirl. But if if I had thought about it for more than the thirty seconds I gave myself to think about it, I probably would have put River Tam from Serenity. Oh yeah, has a little mm-hmm. bit. Although of she's the, kind of got a superhero. She's got a little power. bit of telepathy going on, plus yeah. the ninja skills. Yeah. I would probably put her actually at my top because she is one of the you know those that uses violence only when she has to kind of a character, which is always great. You know, it's yeah. like I'll kick your butt if I need to, but like one of her her best episodes is when she tricks yeah. the bad guy. Um, completely out of the scene, ba- uh, off the episode, basically. So it's great. All right, here we go. Wait, what's supposed to happen? We're gonna do this real quick. Out of ten, Andrew. Wonder Woman. I gave a nine. I can't give a nine to this one, but I still enjoyed it. So I'm gonna give it an eight point seven. Oh, no, wait. Eighty-eight point four, right? Yeah. yeah. No, uh, I wanted to, but that's too low. Eight point seven five. <laughs> Sam. And and I can't I can't go as high as Andrew. Um, it was still fairly enjoyable in parts. The the music is is great. Um, I'm going to give it a good six point two out of ten. Six point two. The IMDb listed as a five and a half. That seems pretty right for me. Five and a half. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. See, I that's think pretty that's pretty harsh. Low. It is harsh, yeah. but I don't care. Also, it, I, I want to point out, too, that Andrew did see this in the theater and had the theater experience with it. So that might have might have helped. I wonder how we would have thought oh, if we would have seen it in a theater. Last thing, you know, I, we have a couple little pieces of business to deal with, Andrew. I, I know I interrupted you, but I wanted to go. ask you this real quick. You watched it in the theater, Sam. You watched it on your 70-inch TV. Yeah. And I watched this on my 42-inch high-def TV. For whatever reason... So the smaller the screen, the, the worse the score. For whatever reason, I don't, uh, yeah, is that there were parts of the, and I mentioned this to you, Sam, specifically. Oh, that's right. Yeah. There were, yep, yep, there yep, were yep. parts of the background, specifically background stuff, that looked like tape, like it was filmed and then broadcast on a screen, like on tape. Like there was, there was a very, multiple times there was a, a quality, like in the background, that I was watching, like on tape or on film. I'm, I'm not describing this very well. Like the, I know what you mean, though. Like, the actors were clear. Did you see it, Andrew? No. And when okay. I went back and watched it to to pull clips on my monitor in front of me, you know, my little 20-inch monitor here, it looked fine. So the only thing I can think of is, for whatever reason, my HBO, um, that conversion was just, there was something weird going on. My stream okay. was fine. It wasn't pixelating. It looked like the background. You know how the intro where their the, their names come up and they have that like tape squiggle mm-hmm. happening, like mm-hmm. that little bit yeah. of. It looked like the the background looked like that in parts. I wish I could, if I if I want to, I might go back and pull it up on my on that TV and see if I can see some scenes where it's doing. Because both my wife and they're like, is that a director's choice? Because it <laughs> like are they trying to make the movie look like 1984 M- more than just the color scheme and whatever. And I'm actually surprised that the three of us never even went there, but it's because we're not children of the eighties. We're kids of the nineties, except Sam, which was already collecting um, retirement in the eighties. But <laughs> oh dear, the, you know, it, it, this movie <laughs> almost feels like it's kind of poking at the eighties as opposed to being reverent of it, you know? Yeah. So, but that just feels like that's because it was made by people that weren't of the eighties. <laughs> you know, it's like, they're kind of our age. I mean, Gal good is uh, younger than I am. She's your age, Andrew. So, really? Yeah. So, I mean, oh wow! You, you have a shot. I, I can put her on my list. Yeah. All right. Um, my the, la- pass list. <laughs> the last thing we have to do, and uh, we did this last week, and so I'm gonna scroll through and play. Um, uh, okay. So it's the quote that I did the game the quote game we did last week. So obviously the quote from last week was from Braveheart. If you guys for those playing at home. Here is the quote for this week. And again, I'm just gonna read it. And this is uh for those who didn't participate last week, this is a, a giant movie poster of quotes that my parents gave me. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. That's the quote. So for those who are playing at home. If you want to shoot me a message or whatever and say, hey, that's from such and such movie, go for it. If you don't know it, that's fine too. 
that's it. That's the, that's our podcast. I'm so sorry. It's, it's a long episode, but we had a lot to say, and it needed saying. At least I think it needed saying. I don't know. And I'm going to play this outro, and I'm fully saying these things now with the knowledge that as I'm listening to this other podcast that I'm listening to, once they hit the credits, I skip the episode. I skip to the next one. So I might have to start putting this yeah. stuff spread throughout the episode. Who knows? So all I'll simply say is thank you guys so much for seven years. Thank you, Sam and Andrew, for seven years. Well, Sam for seven years, Andrew for like six at this point. You've been with us. <laughs> mm, actually, five. You came on at episode 100, so that'd be about five years. So you've been with us for five years now. Yeah. And uh, I really wow. do appreciate you guys sticking with it and the commitment to doing the show because, well, because it's fun. At least I think it's fun. And I think we're going to keep doing it until either it stops being fun or Sam actually does kill me in a weird way. <laughs> I keep trying. Yeah. he, he I, I did go to the ER today for five hours. I thought you almost got me yep. today. It was it was rough. <laughs> our, our website, cheapseatreviews.libsyn.com, is how you can get to our old episodes, including the very first episode. Go back and listen to it. It's terrible. Uh, leaves review on <laughs> iTunes, Google Play, YouTube. Um, please leave us reviews. It'd be really great uh, if you could do that. Cheapseatreviews at gmail.com is our email. Holy crap. I have an email from a listener. I am going to save it for when we do an actual baseball movie because it's a baseball email. Nice. So I'll save it. Alan, I'm going to get to you, man. Um, that's it. On behalf of Andrew and Sam, thank you for listening. This is Sean saying good night. You see, that's it. You got it, capiche? Capiche. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs>